Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. I literally just walked in the door. All I had to do was take my little tractor up for its first service to the tractor place, and five hours later, I am finally walking in the door. Oh, geez. We didn't begin to understand all the stuff that went on during this five hours. But we got everything that was the problem fixed, and we got uh, other issues that weren't a problem uh, addressed. And uh, yeah, it actually was a pretty good day. Uh, got a lot accomplished that uh, we didn't weren't sure some of that stuff we weren't sure we were even going to be able to get it accomplished but the guys at the tractor place said don't worry about it we'll take care of you thank you guys i appreciate it this evening we're going to be reading out of revelation 319 be zealous so if anybody ever comes to you and says you're a religious zealot tell them thank you thank you for noticing i am zealous for my lord Jesus says in Revelation 3.19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. This is just one of the times where Jesus says, be zealous. Now, there's two different kinds of religious zealots. Some of them are involved in the cults. Some are not. There are your born-again believers who are zealous for the Lord. That They do love his word. They do talk about him quite often. They do order their life or as what we covered this morning, order my steps to the Lord. And the Lord does it too. In fact, he does it a lot better than we do. I am a religious zealot. I am, I am zealous for my Lord. I'm zealous for his word. I'm zealous for what he wants. So to me, that's a, that's a compliment. See, the reason why they say that, and they say it in a hateful way, meant to be an insult, is because they don't understand what true born again believing is what true Christianity is the Christianity that follows Jesus wherever he goes the Christianity that believes his word and puts it into practice the Christianity that changes changes a person into something completely different as the Bible says a new creation amazing Let's see what else Jesus has to say here because this is the letters this is the letters one two three four five to the church in Laodicea and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot, or sorry, neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This is amazing, because this is, he's talking to a church. A church. Because you say, I'm rich, hmm. have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. Well, that kind of sounds like the charismatics, doesn't it? And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. How, how would we do that? Believing, salvation, repentance. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. How do we dine? Right here in this word. We're doing it right now, literally. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Jesus is making an interesting statement here. As I also overcame, and he did, he overcame a great deal, more than any of us have had to. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's a commandment of the Lord, by the way. If you would see souls converted... If you would hear the cry that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord, that would that's happening at the end of the tribulation. If you would place crowns upon the head of the Savior and his throne lifted high, then be filled with zeal. For under God, the way of the world's convention, or sorry, conversion, must be by the zeal of the church. Every grace shall do exploits. But this shall be first. Prudence, knowledge, Patience and courage will follow in their places, but zeal must lead the van. Not a Chevy van or a Dodge van, but a, a group of people, an organization of people. It is not the extent of your knowledge, 
though that is useful. It is not the extent of your talent, though that is not to be despised. It is your zeal that shall do great exploits. Notice it's not about us. Where do we get the zeal, Holy Spirit? This zeal is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Well, I didn't read that sentence. Hi, Nina. This zeal is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We can only have it because we have the Holy Spirit within us. It draws its vital force from the continued operations of the Holy Ghost in our soul. If our inner life dwindles, if our heart beats slowly before God, we shall not know zeal. But if all be strong and vigorous within, then we cannot but feel a loving anxiety to see the kingdom of Christ come. And do we not see this? Of course we do. And his will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Justice, truth, reign supreme. That's what we look for. That's what I desire. A deep sense of gratitude will nourish Christian zeal. What have we been talking about? What have I been telling you guys and teaching you guys? Give thanks in all things. Gratitude. Looking to the hole of the pit whence we were digged, we find abundant reason why we should spend, or spend and be spent for God. And zeal is also stimulated by the thought of the eternal future. We look forward to what we know by the scriptures. It looks with tearful eyes down to the flames of hell, and it cannot slumber. It looks up with anxious gaze to the glories of heaven, and it cannot but bestir itself. It feels that time is short compared with the work to be done. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. And therefore, it devotes all that it has to the cause of its Lord. And it is ever strengthened by the remembrance of Christ's example. He was clothed with zeal, as with a cloak. How swift the chariot wheels of duty went with him. He knew no loitering, by the way. Let us prove that we are his disciples by manifesting the same spirit of zeal. Do they call you a zealot? Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. I'm, I'm very, very thankful and have much gratitude that you noticed that I have zeal. You noticed it. That tells me a lot about myself. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ah, there's something wrong with you. You're weird. Thank you. Again, whether you bless me or curse me, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to me. The, my Lord means it that way for me. But the fact that you can look at me and call me those things, the, the fact that you can look at me and say that, the fact that you can think that about me tells me that I'm walking the right path. More evidence of my salvation. Because if I wasn't converted and didn't have those things, if the zeal of the Holy Spirit wasn't being exuded from me or expressed in some way, something's wrong. If we're Christians, this should be something that concerns us. Not concerning us that it's something we need to strive for, but concerning us in that we should be able to see some evidence of it. We should all see something there. If it's not there, that needs to change. How do we do that? Prayer, first of all. Go to the Lord in prayer. Repentance. Change of mind. Change of direction. Change of thought. Change of everything. Be that new creation. It all starts right here in this word. Reading it. Learning it. You don't have to memorize it. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be none of that stuff. Just read it. This is the common man's book and common man's speech. It was meant to be that way on purpose. What's amazing about our time now is we have access to all the world's languages, all the resources of everybody out there. You don't have to be a doctor to understand certain things about the medical practice. Doctors, for one, hate that, that we can just Google stuff and look it up. Archaeology, genealogy, astrology, sorry, not astrology, astronomy. Astronomers, you want to stay away from astrology. It's astronomy, the study of the stars. Astrology is the cult. So if we're willing to go and learn all those things and study all those things and look into them and dedicate our time to them, why can't we dedicate time to this? To show that we really are born again believers. And those things of the Spirit should be manifesting in us. And they're, they're right here on the page. You can see them. Every grace shall do exploits. But this shall be first, prudence, knowledge, patience, courage. And the Bible gives in multiple places in the New Testament others that go along with the category of fruits of the Holy Spirit. And they should be starting to be present in us. We're not going to be perfect at it. But they should be there. 
You can look at other people out there and see that those things aren't present. Oh, there may be a few, just as a natural course of action, but behind closed doors, it's a different story. I heard somebody say of George W. Bush, he's the same man Saturday night that he is Sunday morning. Now, I don't really know if that was true, but I like that. As a Christian, as a born-again believer, we should be the same person Saturday night that we are Sunday morning and Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning and Thursday morning and Friday morning and all the evenings associated with those days. We should be the same person all the time. But what do we see today? Two faces, wishy-washiness, people suddenly just changing out of the blue, revealing their true intentions of their heart, revealing their true agendas, revealing what they're really about and why they're really here. I run into this in my comment section constantly. They sound really nice. They sound really good, but they're here with an ulterior motive. They're here with another agenda. They're here and they're, ex they're, they're just going through all this, all this energy, trying to hide what they're doing, but they expose themselves every time. It's really easy. And it's here to spread hate. It's here to spread lies. It's here to spread deception. No. Man's opinion means nothing. What God says means everything. His word is true. And that's the final. The final statement. The final answer. That's the final response. God's word. What does it say? That's what we go by. All of us are wrong. All of us get it wrong. We're human. That's supposed to be that way. That's how it works. So let us hold on to what the Lord has given us and work within the confines of where he's put us and what he's given us to do. And let us do it with zeal. When somebody calls us out on the carpet about that stuff, was, uh, no. Oh, yeah, you're going to be, yeah, Jesus freaking, uh, yes. Oh, don't you think there's something wrong with that? You all look like, no. When have you ever seen a Christian do some of the stuff they're doing? Either? Oh, all them people claim to be Christian. That's the key word, claimed. None of them are. Because a true born-again believer doesn't do stuff like that. A true born-again believer doesn't shoot up a school. A true born-again believer doesn't go into a shopping mall or a Walmart and gun down people. A true born-again believer doesn't torture their children. I heard a horrific story the other night about a five-year-old. And I'm not going to get into the details because it's pretty graphic. But this isn't isolated. It's all over the place. These aren't these aren't people zealous for the Lord. They claim to be Christian. They're not zealous for the Lord. A Christian can't do that. Perish the thought that we would consider ourselves uh, in the, in our right standing to be able to go and do evil to somebody else in any form. It's not right. We know it's not right. So we need to be zealous. Turn to the Lord and our zealous and our zeal. Be for him in these last days. The worse it gets, the more we need to announce who we are. Uh, no, thank you. I'm not. You know, are you too good to come and, and party with us? No, I just, it's not my scene and I don't want to get involved in it. And the Lord is watching and he has other ideas for me and I have other things to do. So, no. What do you mean the Lord? Um, I'm a Christian. I follow Jesus Christ. Oh, you're one of those people. Okay, sure, whatever, but I'll see y'all later. I don't have time. I'm not going to sit in church Sunday morning, nodding my head and agreeing with the pastor when he says, don't go to this place. Y'all shouldn't be going to this place. And I was there last night. That's hypocritical. Yet I've witnessed it a great deal. I sat in an iron sharpens iron meeting one time and the pastor said, it's a, so this is going to be a, a pretty interesting question to ask, but we're all men here. You know, we, we know how this works. Has anybody here committed adultery? And I nodded my head. I said, yes, I have a bunch of times. And all the men turned and looked at me and all of them said no and shook their head no. They all turned and looked at me. I'm like, what? You guys never looked at a woman and lusted after her? You never looked at a woman and wondered what it would be like to have sex with her? Jesus said, that's adultery. And they all looked away and, didn't, and changed the subject. They didn't want to talk about it anymore. Your wives have two, by the way. It happens. We're human. doesn't make it right, but we're human. One of the first steps of having zeal for the Lord is admitting your sin, confessing it, acknowledging it. Lord, this is sin. I'm doing it. It's sin. I don't want to do it anymore. I hate it. I hate the evil that I do. This is one of the things Paul was shouting from the rooftops constantly. Be zealous for the Lord. He's worth it. He's worth your zeal. He was zealous enough to die for you. 
Can we not return the favor and be zealous for him and preach his word? Live a life for glorifying him? Love our brothers and sisters and our fellow man? Be good and show kindness to all? Amen and amen. Thank you all for joining me for Evening at Devotion. Be zealous. I'd rather spend an eternity in heaven than an eternity in hell because I missed it by 18 inches from my forehead to my heart. And I'd rather tell everybody the truth and offend them into heaven than love them into hell. I'll have forever to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll have forever to apologize. But this is real. And as born-again believers, we need to be these kind of people, these zealous people set apart. That people will look at us and go, or if somebody new moves in a neighborhood, and they ask somebody out there, maybe even neighbors you don't care for. Oh, those those people there, this, those people there, that. Oh, you want to know what they got going on. What about these people who are here? Oh, those are Christians. They're pretty, they're pretty stuck up. They're pretty, they're pretty, they're zealots. I, you know, to, to put a term on it. But they're real nice. See, people should be able to tell who we are. And that's evident by how we live and the manifestation of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives. People hate this. They hate it with a passion. I don't know why. I'd rather be that way. Life's better that way. And we serve our Lord in doing this. It's amazing. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.